Hello everyone. Welcome to the video series on Hello World of Machine Learning. This is chapter 5 and in this chapter we will be using some real data set. In fact, we will be using Iris data set which is also called Hello World data set of machine learning. So far in chapter 0 to 4 we have learned about basics of machine learning by generating our own data set and applying a couple of algorithms like KNN and linear regression into it. We now have a very decent understanding of how machine learning work. So it's time to expand our understanding by applying our learning to real data set. In this case, Iris data set. Again, just a reminder, these videos are in series. I will highly recommend you to go ahead and look into video number 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 before continuing on this particular chapter. This will help you to understand what I am doing and why I am doing and how I am doing. So let's talk about this Iris data set. This is a relatively small data set with just 150 rows and each row contains four features and a single label. So the features are sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width. Based on these features, the flower can be of three types called iris setosa, iris versicolor and iris virginica. These three have different characteristic of sepal and petal width and length. So let's go ahead, load this data, train our algorithm and see the output. Now we will load the iris data. I'll again emphasize that scikit-learn is a very good tool to start your journey with machine learning. The iris data set is actually available as a built-in data set. We just need to import it and start playing with it. So in here I'm importing iris data set from sklearn.dataset. Done. Creating an instance of iris data set. Done. Now let's see the name of features. You can see that features are sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width in cm centimeters. Now we know the feature names. Let's see how the data looks like. As I said, these are four features, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. So these are the 150 row of these four features for all the 150 data set. Okay. And now let's talk about target. Target means label. The target is Setosa, Versicolor or Virginica. And if we see target data set, you can see that first few data set is of Setosa. Next few data set is for Versicolor and last set of data is for Virginica. So zero represents Setosa, one represent Versicolor and two represent Virginica. Now, all these data are NumPy array, both the data as well as target. We can check the shape of it. You can see that the data is having 150 row and four column and target is having 150 row. Okay, now let's split the iris data into training set and test set. As we have learned from chapter four that whenever we get a training data, we need to break the data into training set and test set. So for example, in this particular case, Let's assume that we will be using 75% of the data for training and 25% of the data for testing. As you know, we will be using scikit-learn model selection train test split. There is no simple formula of how much data should be part of test data and how much data should be of training data. Just for simplicity purpose, let's assume that we will be using 75% of the data as training data and 25% of the data as test data. I will be calling this function by passing the data as well as target test size at 0.25. It will return me x train, x test, y train, y test. So I have explained what is the meaning of this and how this function return these things in chapter 4. If you are not clear, please go ahead and look into chapter 4. Done. Let's see the shape of training and test data and you can see that 112 out of 150 is for training data and 38 is for test data. Okay. Now we have learned two algorithms called KNN and linear regression. Let's use KNN algorithm first. I'll import a KNN algorithm and create an instance of KNN classifier with neighbor equal to one. I'll fit the training data. 
Now I will check the model performance. I don't need to predict. I can just use the test data to check the model performance. Again, I have discussed about all this in last chapter, chapter four. So let's see the performance of this model. Well, at this point of time, it is saying approximately 97% of the data is correct. And I have written 92% because last time it gave me different value because every time training set will be different. So you may get different results. And to predict, I can just pass the test data and see the test output which was originally there. 97% means almost all should be correct pairing the one or two. And you can see that this line here it is two, here it is one. So one mistake I have found out. So 97% is a very good number. Now let's go ahead and use linear regression. Fit the data and again check the score. The accuracy is approximately 90%. So in this particular case, it looks like KNN is a better algorithm. And we can also use the predict and check the test data. You will be surprised to see that since linear regression will not give you any existing data, it just gives you a straight line. 0.9 will map to one and it will be considered as a correct data during the score. That's why you see 90% accuracy of prediction. So I believe you must feel that after learning about using scikit-learn, you can take any data now and pass them along in different algorithm and check the score and performance. You can very well tweak with data set, training data set, amount of training data set, in KNN, number of neighbors, there are various options with linear regression also. And you can just try to come up with the best possible model for your data. So that's all about it. I hope I was able to explain thing in the clearest possible way. Thanks a lot guys. Thanks for watching. Please take a moment to like, share, comment and subscribe. See you in next video.